rapping on a song. I'm making a move. Don't need no higgies for this song. I got joy all through my soul. I'm making a move. Right now, it starts. Well, Gary, thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, you're welcome. Good to see you. Good to be here. I got yeah, Stanley. I should say, uh, welcome, welcome to Stanley too. Here, I should say. <laughs> oh yes, yeah. Stanley's going to be uh, moderating as well, just in case there's anything that's inappropriate that uh, I say that sh- shouldn't have mentioned about dogs. So, <laughs> so he'll, yeah, he'll censor. He'll censor us in case we yeah, get off topic sure. or anything. So, <laughs> yeah. well, Gary, obviously, uh, we're, we're I'm excited to be talking to you today. Lots of good stuff to go over. Um, you know, we, we mentioned in the intro, you're running the number one team in the world for Remax, which is absolutely amazing. I was about to correct you. Yes, the number one Remax team in the world. So right, always, right. Always I know, a, but yeah. and we can qualify either way. I mean, it's, this is pretty impressive stuff. So you know, I don't, I don't know that matters what qualifiers we put on it, right? But let, let's dig in here, right? Because I mean, obviously, anybody watching this, you know, if you're going to be learning from somebody who's one of the best in the world, you're going to want to ask quite a few questions. So obviously yep. a lot of angles we could go into. Um, you know, this team is is really massive. I mean, just give people an idea. I think you have about 180 people on your team at this point. Is that correct? Yep, 180. Fluctuates 180, 175, but we're continually recruiting. So continually expanding. So it's uh, always two steps forward, one step back, two steps forward, one step back. So I think we're at 180. So we'll probably be... Wow. 200 in you know, two or three months. So as long as we can create the, the um, supply of opportunities for the agents, we'll keep on growing, right. I think. I love that. Well, so let's let's dig in on that first, because obviously there's probably all kinds of angles I'm sure people want to know more about. But a big one is is that supply, right? So obviously part of recruiting, part of uh, attracting the right people for a team like this is being able to say, hey, this is a bigger opportunity than you're going to get elsewhere. So you've obviously built quite a system at this point, quite a lot of, of marketing savvy goes into that. So walk us walk us through that a little bit. I mean, what, what are you, I guess, when you are attracting a new agent, what are, what are some of the promises you're making to them? What, are the, what can they expect to get when they join your team? So, I mean, there's never any 100% guarantees, but we have sure. systems that have been in place. They started with me, then we brought other people in that are smarter than me that have taken some of those things. We've leveraged what the, the connections we have. You know, we've been, um, we've used John Cheplak for a while to, for, for coaching and for inspiration on, on doing things. And we've worked with the Remax, Remax, oh, I've forgotten who it is that does the systems there. But um, l- taking all these different systems and um, forms of education so we can learn how to grow the business. So from that, we've developed systems where we can actually more or less promise that if you follow the systems, this, there's no guarantees in life, but, if, but essentially if you follow the systems, then you will be successful. I always used to say when I was, it was just me running the team and maybe 10 or 12 agents before we got big. I'd always say, if you, if you don't, I, I can guarantee you'll have a closing somewhere between now and six months. Well, now we can compress that time and we have agents that join the team, they go through our boot camps, so there's a lot of training. There's a, essentially information overload for the first two or three weeks. But right. the benefit is they hit the ground running and they're not, they're not prospecting for, for, for clients. We're actually giving them opportunities. And so if I always like sporting analogies or a car. So in this case, you essentially come on the field if it's an American football. If I'm the quarterback, this is an opportunity. And boom, you've been through the, the, the boot camp, the training camp, and then you come on the field and then you catch the first ball and then you mm. score a touchdown. So that's essentially what can happen. Now, you don't get wow. those opportunities where it's a guaranteed touchdown every time, but we're, we're almost guaranteed you're going to get the ball. You're going to get uh, an opportunity. Mm-hmm. Um, and so agents are, are graduating, as it were, from boot camp. They're, they're uh, in some cases, having one or two deals within a few weeks, which is wow, pretty good. So it's a, it's a fast start. Yeah, I, I like that. I mean, that's... 
and it's it's something that if it happened one time, like uh, that was lucky, but it happens quite a lot with the agents that join the team. So if you follow the system, if you learn everything, you follow the, the steps that we're kind of laying out for you, um, the opportunities are there and you can convert um, pretty quickly, which is what everybody wants at the end oh, of the day. Yeah. I mean, you want to meet right. people who are actually living and breathing uh, clients that actually do want to buy a home. And so with the team, that's what we do. We, we generate, I can't remember how many leads a month, 3,000 leads a month. But of those wow. leads, then they, we nurture them. The, uh, so by the time they get to an agent, they're actually what we would call an opportunity. So it's not something that they have to hmm. then nurture for another two to three months or six months, or some cases two years, three years. They're actually somebody that says, I want to go see this house. Um, um, they put their hand in their air to say that they're a qualified buyer or seller, essentially. Right. Interesting. Well, so I want to I want to dig in on that if we can a little bit here, because I know if, if I'm an agent, I'm sort of thinking from their perspective for a second, you know, I mean, there's a lot of teams that say they provide leads, right? And yep. I've heard from plenty of agents like, well, I mean, they, yeah, they give me some names and numbers, but they're not very good. I can't convert them. They don't turn into anything, right? So yep. I know that when agents hear that, you know, you're explaining it in a way that helps me understand, okay, this is more than just a lead, right? This is a, this is a qualified opportunity. So Look, yeah. Can we talk through that process a little bit? Because obviously you've got a machine running, right? You've got something that, that's able to attract people in the first place, but then it's also nurturing them. So let, let's, I mean, let's start at the top. I mean, what are, what are some of the things you're doing that's getting people in the door in the first place? What are, what are some of the advertising techniques that you like? So, so very early on, I would think I would be described as an early adopter for internet lead generation. So. Okay. When I came to America, I'm from England, when I came to America in 1990, the first thing that I did was me and my dad bought a mom and pop motel in Florida. So that's the 1990s. First thing we did, trifold brochure. I knew how to get to the, the English through what would, using the national newspapers, it's called like last minute snatch space. Sunday covers the whole of England. So I knew how to reach, um, our target market. I used to work in advertising agencies, so that's how I got that little insight. So created a trifold brochure. So then when the internet came along in the mid, uh, like 97, 98, we were an earlier adopter there. So we had a website for the hotel, which was essentially the three pages or the six sides of a trifold brochure. So we uploaded that. The website that, that was on actually enabled me to create additional pages. I didn't really know what I was doing, but I, I knew enough to take some of that HTML coding, create a new page, add some more information, add some more pictures. So what I was doing was really creating a, a better user experience for anybody that came to our website. Because now, instead of sending them a trifold brochure, we're sending them to the, to the website. So you want people to come to the website, be able to look through it, I mean, what do you want to see? You want to see about the pricing. Then you want to see about the rooms. Then you want to see the layout of the rooms. So I was doing things like I would, it was, everything was hyperlinked. So you could click on the, the room and the rate. That would then take you to like a floor plan of the room. And then it would show you where the windows were, where the bedroom was. And then if you click on where the window was, then you would see the view. So, um, just, just making the user experience that much better. And so that really helped then. So then when I moved to Nashville, kind of took that um, knowledge with me because then I realized I moved in 2000, got my license in 2001. That happened to be the same year that it was the uh, IDX came about, the Internet Data Exchange, which right. allowed me to have a website, but it also allowed me to have everybody's listings on it, which I thought was fantastic. Hmm. And so then um, I think I used an advanced access for a, a while. And uh, then I went to, I wanted to do more with the website because I wanted to be creative and create my own user experience as it were. So then I went to Real Estate Webmasters, which was a custom website. So I started doing stuff with them and that meant that I was really into figuring out what, what people wanted to do. 
but obviously you've got to get people have to find you so that was the, the other advantage that um, real estate webmasters are really SEO friendly so then mm -hmm. websites so I started spending money on search engine optimization so that people can actually find you in the organics the search right. and then uh, I think I may have before that, I was doing pay-per-click. That's right. So I was one of the first ones to do pay-per-click. Hmm. So that enabled me to generate money from my website. That's right, yeah. And then from there, I wanted more people. Was like, how do I get found in the organics? That's when I went to Real Estate Webmasters and we created a custom site. So, And then from there, I mean, that was 2003 or four. So wow. it's fairly, so I would say an early adopter of a pay-per-click because some of the first leads right. I generated from pay-per-click. Um, that's when I learned speed to lead because as soon as I got a lead, I would have it. This is this is aging me. I would have that lead sent to my pager. So my pager, so doop, I wouldn't go to the email. I would just call straight from the pager. And so that's when I realized that people really, you can't wait for two days or two hours or right. you want to contact that person. I mean, essentially microseconds. So did that. And then um, because of that was successful, that led me to do the website, which then led to more leads, which then put me in a situation which uh, as, the, as the site became more successful. Here's my analogy. Tennis ball machine. I've used this a few times, but I think it works. So if you imagine a tennis ball machine, if I'm doing pay-per-click and I'm getting one lead, maybe two leads a day, I know that I can catch every single lead. Right. As it became more successful and started rising, became um, uh, like the number one, number two, number three site for the, for the keyword searches that I wanted. Then I was getting another, another lead coming in, another lead coming in. So that's, and I could still catch all the leads and I was the one that was making the call. So, and then each lead you would put in your cradle in your, you know, in your arm. You know, each time a t new tennis ball came in, and then human nature is to want, oh, well, that's a great lead. I'll take that. Oh, two million. Oh, I'll take that one. Oh, seven fifty. I'll take that one. So you can grab every single lead, but then you put them over here and you cradle them in your arm. But when you get past about 10 or 15, all that happens is you can still get every single new lead, but the one that you got, you know, four hours ago, that starts falling through to the floor because you're right. not paying the attention you should do. Um, so that's when I realized that I need to start a team here. And so take the lead and then instead of me, I just, it's like a hot potato, boom, let's get it out to somebody else. So that's how the, the team evolved. And then Fast forward a few years, you know, so we're doing really well on SEO, lots of leads. And then I was realizing that I was just, I was overburdening agents with leads. Hmm. And then I brought, uh, when we brought on um, ISAs, so that, so, because the agents would get so many leads they wouldn't call. So now we brought in the wow. whole process of let's, let's make sure we make every, every client gets a call. So we did so, that. Gary, one, one quick question that, on that is what, what was that level? So like how many leads is a point where like an agent can't handle them anymore? Well, I used to give, I used to overload everybody with leads. That's then I would complain. Yeah. How come you haven't closed yeah. this? When they were like, you know, I've got too many. And I would, anybody that was huh. good, I would throw more leads. So I'm terrible when it comes to that. So <laughs> as a good, uh, good problem to have, I would good, say, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that, but that, that's why the team keeps on growing because, you know, I'm, my shiny object is lead generation. I like figuring out new ways to generate more leads, new partnerships, new ways of, you know, so can we work with all the big, big three, you know, Realtor.com, Zillow, Homes.com, Ylopo is a, another great lead generation source. In addition to what we're doing with pay-per-click, because I'm still using pay-per-click, and we're still okay. using uh, the SEO to generate leads. So wow. keep finding new ways to generate more leads. And then we do some sports marketing. I do billboards. 
do radio, right. do TV. So we're always figuring out ways to generate more leads. Um, but then we went from having the ISAs answer all the calls and then give out the leads to then realizing that the, probably the, the best person to really to, to take that call, I, I always said, was the actual agent themselves. So then we went a, ne a next step and then brought in somebody that, uh, that was an agent on the team. His name's Scott Hull, and he became the first licensed ISA on the team. And oh, the idea okay. was, for, was to, because he was so good on the phone, so smart, and so it ended up, he then started building the ISA department, and he was responsible for then intertwining a lot of the tech that we use. Because I always okay. consider myself techy until I met Scott, and then Scott really, really is techy. So um, we use Call Action, Wilopo, we use the AI stuff, we um, do all this kind of stuff. And then so then we have all the nurture programs. So now we're, we're taking the leads. So the leads don't get given to the agents until they're actually being taught to, they're being nurtured. So we call them opportunities at that point, because it's not a lead right. that you have to work and generate. You may have to do some work with it, but all the all the the behind the scenes work, waiting for that person. Maybe they're not ready when they register on the site. Maybe they you know they just found out that they may be moving to Nashville. So that's a logical thing is to go on Google um, Nashville Homes for Sale or go on Zillow. But it may be that in that buy-in life cycle, they may be, they're right at the very beginning. So right. they just heard that they may be getting interviewed for the job in Nashville. And that might be another two months before they actually confirm they got the job in Nashville. Then they've got to put their house in the market. They've got to sell it. And then, so it might be a three or four month process. If, you know, if somebody's signing up on the lead before right. they're actually saying, we want to go, want to go see a, um, I want to go see a home. So that's what we do. We take care of all that nurturing, incubation, and then when that person's ready to see a property or actually wants to talk to an agent because they want some one-on-one -on -one, um, information they want to know about the areas and things like that, that's when we give them to, right, to the team, to the agent. Okay. Well, so, so walk me through some of this nurturing. I, you know, that's kind of what I'm curious about because I think – Obviously, most agents, you get a lead, they want to move tomorrow, they, you know, they don't have to know. To know about all the in-depth stuff along the, yeah, that's that's not what I do. That's uh, that's essentially, um, so we have a sales director, sales team, they're the sure. ones that do all that. So that's where we're partnering, like I said, with Wilopo, with Call Action. Uh, we do some of the stuff with Hatch, you know, all these campaigns and things. Um, I used to write them, but then I realized that it's probably people who are better qualified to do that. Um, right. So I could come in and I still tweak them because I still feel like I've got some good insight. But that whole process through um, nurturing with, like, like most people, I think it's not, it's, this is the norm now. Somebody signs up and then you're doing um, IDX updates with, right. with um new listings, new price reductions when they start coming in again. Um, we have off-market homes because we're, you know, when we get to 180, we have the ability to see what's coming within the brokerage. So um, hmm. we know just by the sheer size of the team, the volume of, of new listings that we get, we're about, that's, that's why we can match those with the buyers within the team. So it's just creating that added value that um, a buyer mm -hmm. wants. Because I always equate buyers, you know, going on websites. That's back in the day, you know, mid 2000. If you were looking for homes and you drove into a new area, you would probably go to the local supermarket or gas station, and you would pick up the Homes magazine. There's another version right. of a Homes magazine, um, Home and Country magazine. So that's what people do now. They start the search online, as we know, but they don't just go to one website. They go to three, four, five. And we've seen this because we're, we're market VIP for Realtor.com. We're flex partner for Zillow. So we're seeing all these leads coming in. I've seen them all coming in organically. So 
A lot of times it's right. the different platforms be the same person because they're, they're trying to figure out how do they get the best access to the best information. So when we point out that we have this off-market inventory, inventory, how do you say it in America? Off-market yeah, home. Inventory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's the added value that we provide. So Yeah, no, I love that. Done. I mean, well, that makes sense. I mean, obviously, I think that's for, for any team, you know, that, that's great advice is kind of look at what are the opportunities that the, just the nature of your team is creating, right? And then using those to kind of continue to scale, continue to, to defend yourself. That was yeah, the, that's smart. That was the mess. So we've been doing radio and TV, sports marketing for oh, over 10 years now, I think. And so yeah. the message that I was trying to get across is that if you're a seller, why wouldn't you work with us? I get 10 to 15,000 people a day using the site. So we have that inside knowledge. We have that intel, as it were. Right. And uh, we're actually seeing what buyers do, what sites, which homes they're looking at, what price points they're looking at. So that's when, uh, you know, I was trying to ask in my agency, you know, like, how do we get that message across? And that's when they came up with the don't sell without the intel. So that's the, gen mm. the genesis of that idea. So that became like our local catchphrase so if you live in nashville that's what we have on the billboards that's what we say on the radio and the, the tv is it don't sell without the intel and originally it was about that but then it became it applies to so many more different things like the off-market properties they so see we have the intel to right. let you know what's coming on the market before anybody else so um hmm. always looking for those advantages and then because of the tech aspect of the site. So we just started working with Dorsey. I don't know if you know who Dorsey is. It's another um, listing tool that allows us to, it's a bidding platform essentially. So, um, so we're working with those. So that gives our clients the ability to um, list in using that, um, that tool, which is beneficial. We also do stuff with actual auctions. We do stuff with Open door. I mean, we we have so many wow. tools as a as a as a brokerage. So that whole don't sell without the intel. It's got a plays into all that kind of thing. Yeah, so. that makes sense. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this, Gary, because it sounds like you know, for, it sounds like you obviously have lots of different advertising approaches, lots <laughs> of different branding you're doing. You know, you seem yep. to see it as a sort of holistic system because obviously you can touch people in different places. Yeah. My question for you, because this does come up a lot, is, is obviously a lot of folks, they look at their advertising and they try to find places where it's not working and they try to cut things out to save money. Um, yeah. have, do you run into anything like that? Like, is, is, are there any types of marketing you've done that didn't work that you got rid of? Or do you tend to just see it as, hey, as long as I'm getting in front of people, this is worth it? So, I mean, I have, so this is the benefit of being on a team, right? So if you're team leader, it's probably going to invest in some things that work and work really well. And they're probably going to invest in some things that are, um, excuse me, <laughs> an abysmal failure. So I've happened, had right. that happen two or three times, you know, I've like, this is a great idea. Let me, I'm an early adopter. I'll spend some money on that. And then found out that, you know, it wasn't, it didn't work. So, um, hmm. Whenever your agents on a team complain that the splits aren't good enough, they have to bear in mind that there's a lot of time and investment that's gone into building those opportunities, and not all of them are winners. You know, so that's that's like I think it's it's making people aware that you know some things aren't successful. So when it comes to advertising, that's a little harder because if you know the Gary V principle of like jab 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 right you know where does the right hook come right. from so if you you can't just put billboards up and expect to get that to generate your business so you have to support that with radio i went the other way around i did radio first and then billboards and then we start to do tv um but those all part of the process because if you're looking online you maybe you'll find my website but that's reinforced by the fact that you heard me on the radio right but subliminally you're aware of it from the billboard and then you come to the website and then you you create that pre-approval so you got some brand equity because you've 
and you can't just do it for two weeks. You, I mean, we've been doing it for, like I said, for 10 years. So it builds up that awareness over a period of time. So if, you, if you're brand new to the area, then you don't know, wouldn't know us. But if you start driving around, then you'll see the billboards and then hopefully you hear the radio. So that reinforces it. So it may be that the reason that you call is because you saw us on online, saw a product, but right. it gave you confidence to call because you'd seen that name around, seen it on the billboard, mm. seen it on, uh, on the TV or heard it on the radio. So, so can yeah. you... It's more effective. All I know is that when I started doing billboards, that reinforced what I've been doing for the previous three, three to five years on radio. So it was a natural mm -hmm. progression. Um, and maybe you start with billboards, but I still feel like that's just one element of your marketing campaign. You need, uh, you need some supporting, uh, supporting mediums. So radio, right? Yeah, was great. Yeah, that and makes sense. I mean, you, you can you can tell you have a background in advertising because you understand this stuff at a level I don't think yeah. most people do. That's that's good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we do the stuff with the um, we've done the Titans for the last ten years. We're not doing that anymore, but we're still working with the uh, the Predators because we have a really good relationship with those guys. So if you ever go to a, cool. a hockey game, there's 42 games a year. So 42 games you see in my advertising, but you're also seeing there's a any events that you go to, of course, it's a it's a music venue, so you see they still advertise right. it during the music events and any like mm. um, I don't know the Harlem Globetrotters went there. They got the the monster truck rides, the rodeo. So any event still gets exposure. So again, it's like that subliminal jab, 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 and then right two weeks later, I think we, maybe we need to sell a think about selling a house. Drive past the billboard, hear me on the radio, then go online to look at what's available, come to our site, and then, oh, I've seen that name, Ashton, Ashton, Ashton. So, right, smart. It's very, very hard very to cool. track. Well, that's fair, yeah. So it's hard to know where it comes from because of all the different touches, right? Yep. So one, one last question on this this front uh, here, Gary, is, you know, you're talking about being an early adopter. Obviously, that's, you know, sounds like it's been a, a big key part of your success over the years. What about yep. today, right? We're in 2022 at this point. Um, what are the early adoption things that are happening now, right? Because if, if I'm a new team leader or if I'm trying to grow my team and I obviously can't be one of the first to do SEO or, or pay-per-click ads, is there anything yeah. emerging right now you would encourage people to keep an eye on or to start trying? So the one, I mean, they're not new. They're, I mean, TikTok, obviously, and Instagram, Facebook, mm -hmm. all those okay. things. Um, I was always worried about being too entrenched in what you do now. Because I, I remember with the, the first time I went to a, um, as a buyer's agent, I went to a listing that I got through my IDX site. And the listing agent was annoyed. It's like, how did you get? these people to come to my listing and it was because I met them online and he, he couldn't figure that out. So I never wanted to be that, that so entrenched, mm -hmm. stuck in the mud. So, um, obviously still aware of, of Instagram, TikTok. I know it was some people on the team that are doing fantastic with TikTok, uh, TikTok. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not that much involved in TikTok. Um, I do have a TikTok page, but I should be doing more. But um, that's the one thing is like there's always something because at some point it's just like music. W whatever your parents like, you probably don't like when you're 15 or 16. So you look, you listen to different forms of music. So I think we all know right. that Facebook has kind of like become a maybe that's like the country club now, and then Instagram was more like the the newer hipper thing, and then you've got. Um, uh, TikTok being super cool and trendy, but at some point that inflection is going to move as well. So, the, what are the, what are the, what's the newest thing? Um, I'm not quite sure right now, but those things are, and like I think millennials now are, are going to be in the approaching the 40s. So that's probably one of right. the biggest markets. So what were they? Were all on Snapchat, Instagram? Are they all on TikTok? I don't know. Maybe. 
Probably. Starting to be, yeah. Seems like TikTok's, you know, picking up a lot. It, everybody seems to be joining at this point, you know. Yeah. So I think I cool. you know, just making sure if you have kids, you probably ask them. They'll probably tell you what the cool new uh, uh, way of communicating is. I think house parties, is that a new one? Somebody was telling me about that the other day. Yeah, house party, that's one, right. Yep. Cool. So yeah, just keeping an eye on the latest, greatest social apps and forms of communication. Makes yep. sense. Yep. yep. Very yep. cool. Yep. All right. Well, I know we are running out of time here, Gary. I don't want to keep you too much longer. Um, final question, though, and this is obviously important to some of the people listening, is if I was listening and I was in the Nashville area, I'd be wondering, how do I get involved? You know, So how, do, how does somebody uh, talk to you if they're looking to get involved with the team or if they're looking to buy or sell a house? So for me, um, you just Google, Google Gary Ashton, and you'll, I have GaryAshton.com. If you wanted to join the team, join GaryAshton.com. If you're looking for homes, just go to nationalrealestate.com or just Google Google anything and hopefully one of our sites will be will come up and you'll be able to find us. But yeah, GaryAshton.com, nationalrealestate.com. And if you want to join the team, join GaryAshton.com. Perfect. Gary well, I love the, the SEO confidence. That's great. <laughs> yeah, so my competition on on is really Zillow, uh, Zillow, Realtor.com, Homes.com, um, you know, the big ones, and then uh, uh, Redfin, you know, Redfin. So mm. locally, I'm probably one of the m more prominent local agents. Um, yeah, so we do really well on, on so the vanity keywords like Nashville Real Estate, I think we're probably, we bounce around from three to five. I think Zillow or Home. Wow. Zillow or Realtor.com is usually number one, but it's the long tail where we really excel. So if you specifically know mm -hmm. a subdivision or an area, like if you want, if you're looking for um, condos for sale in the Gulch, then I'm probably going to come up number one or Laurel Brook wow. Homes or West Haven Homes in Franklin are usually number one or two. So that's where we generate a lot of business from the long tail. So, but if you Google Gary Ashton, I think I'm probably connected to maybe eight out of the top ten there, in some form or other. We'll come yeah. back to me. We should That's do awesome. that. Google yeah. Gary Ashton. came up when I searched for you. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's the best. Cool. Word. All right. Well, good stuff. Well, Gary, thank you so much for, for joining me for the chat today. I appreciate it. Yeah. And Instagram is Gary.Ashton. I couldn't get Gary Ashton. Somebody already had that. So Gary.Ashton. Yeah. Everybody follow Gary. You know, he's got to get that social media going. He got the SEO covered. So next step, social media. Love it. Cool. All right. Well, for those of you tuning in, uh, thanks for joining us. This has been another episode of Broker Breakdown. We're going to get signed off here, but we hope to see you again on the next episode. We'll talk to you then. Oh,